All right, hello everyone. Uh, I'm trying to make it short, you know, because I'm between you and the food in the bathroom, so uh, I'm, uh, you know, very sensible to those kind of topics. All right, so um, as Dave said, I'm, uh, I'm the, uh, the primary storage guy, and I'm also the memoir guy, the legacy guy, so I want to just give you a quick uh, uh, you know, context of uh, where we are coming from. All right, so we have a system built um, over the last year. It's called Legacy. Uh, it's a community and a platform for capturing and preserving um, humanity's history in form of individual memoirs. They could be personal ones, they could be institutional memoirs. And uh, uh, essentially, that's uh, what we do. We came to that uh, uh, through personal experience. Uh, Jonah was actually sitting down with his grandfather who was suffering from dementia, and you know, he was able through old photos uh, to capture. Uh, the old stories, you know, I wrote a little bit of uh, uh, autobiographical piece and I also connected a lot with my mom about those things. So, so this is just uh, uh, sort of very nice and very important things, I think, from uh, family and society uh, to uh, keep track of, uh, of personal history and then weave this together to a uh, history, a world history uh, from individual uh, perspectives. Um, so while we're into that, you know, we realize there's really not a place for storing your memoirs forever, right? And forever is a big word, right? Um, so you know, we're well aware of that. So in reality, what we're really talking about is a long time, you know, multi-generational uh, perhaps, right? And, um, uh, and then we'll see how it goes. And actually other people will see how it goes, right? Because by definition, we won't be around anymore. All right, so, but these are sort of very interesting uh, things to tackle. You know, here you, you see a quick screenshot of what we have. You know, feel free to go to our legacy page is the URL. Uh, we are building on Filecoin. We also have Immutable X, uh, a layer two blockchain, which we use uh, for minting NFTs. And uh, uh, that leads us quickly to um, how, the whole, you know, how the whole thing works, right? So memoir essentially is a JSON document where we store the text and the metadata, and then we have links to uh, media files. Uh, for all of that stuff, we mint NFTs, you know, not because we are the NFT bros, but we really do this in the original sense that we want to create a digital certificate uh, for creating ownership um, of, those, of those assets. You know, but that's basically where the, uh, the blockchain comes into the picture. Right? Then we have Filecoin for storing the documents. And uh, one really interesting thing is, you know, that we got to manage the whole thing, right? So that, that doesn't manage it by itself. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you can't just write a smart contract to have that thing keep running and running and running, right? Because technology is going to change. Lots of unforeseeable things are going to happen, right? And you need to have some sort of organizational thing which is going to help with that. And uh, that was also interesting to the talks with the two or three before uh, from Joel um, about uh, um, how do you actually measure contributions because our idea here is that you cannot buy the right to govern, right? And you can't also have 10 million people every sort of voting on everything. That's not going to work, right? So the thinking is that you own the right by making meaningful contribu contributions uh, to the community, right, and you maybe look at hundreds of people who would then do this governance and, and they would earn uh, a governance token. And so that's why it was really interesting uh, to, to hear that talk and connect, right? But that's, uh, you know, that's sort of one other aspect of, of the long-term storage, right? Because it's not only a technical and the financial component, but it's also um, an organizational, the cultural component, right? You also need to maintain the culture of something like this. And um, uh, yeah, so now we come to the perma storage, right? And the perma storage, what we specifically mean is that you have a model where you appear once and uh, you store forever, right? And why is that so important? Well, it's so important because that people in defunct organizations don't pay bills, right? And, uh, you know, I just depicted here you know, a couple of friends of mine, yeah. Uh, as, as an example, uh, you know, who are, who, or their organizations are not around anymore, right? So, now, the idea is 
essentially have two trends, right? One trend is that storage costs are going down, or and the other one is that the storage volume is going to go up. When you think about it, then you can think, well, you can create a system where basically today's storage, it's going to be in terms of volume and in terms of pricing, it's going to be a rounding error of that for future generations. Well, and you think, okay, well, that sounds actually pretty good, right? But then you also ask yourself, well, is that a Ponzi scheme, right? And, uh, you know, I you know, think our answer to that is no, right? But uh, um, you know, the, the, the proof is still in the pudding for that, right? But what, what we really do here is, you know, we want to create transparency, you know, and uh, uh, we have, you know, fairly conservative uh, assumptions uh, to, to do these calculations. Right? And, and so basically it was really, you know, these two trends and then the question is, yeah, it, it looks good. Right, so but uh, uh, essentially what I did is I did a, a back of the envelope uh, model just to just to figure that out and see if if it's if it can work out right. And uh, so here is just also the basic assumption we had. So you know, we have decreasing storage prices. You know it's sort of very very conservative. Here we said okay, well it's going to be decrease you know one percent. Uh, year over year, kind of looked at storage price development over the last 30 years, and that seemed to be uh, somewhat of a reasonable assumption. All right, uh, then uh, the uh, the other one is that we said, okay, we're going to have uh, um, a growth factor um, of 20% uh, uh, year over year. You know, we also built in a 20% profit margin for the storage providers. You know, that again, you know, they have some some reasonably uh, safe assumptions here. And uh, you know that's basically uh, uh, how the curve looks for that. You know, and we took the two together and uh, said, okay, well, what actually does it cost uh, to to provide uh, the uh, you know what's the storage cost for the for the combined uh, amount of storage you have? And and that's really the beauty, and it was really sort of the, the surprising thing to see. So I was very happy when, when that graph sort of emerged in my spreadsheet, you know, that you see, okay, at some point in time, you know, you, you, you limit the growth and, and it stabilizes, right? And that's exactly, uh, you know, the, the kind of behavior we were hoping for. So it says, okay, yes, you can actually achieve a model where, you know, basically your future generations, you know, um, are going to pay um, for, for the storage you have today, so you can really achieve that pay once uh, store forever model. All right, so now the model itself is very simplistic, right? It's really sort of the back of, of the envelope, and it was really, you know, just to, 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 to get a feel for it, right? It's, it's no proof in whatsoever, right? So it's, and, and, you know, these are sort of the deficiencies which are in there, right? So it's, it's based on a stable currency, uh, there was no inflation built in. There was no currency fluctuations built in there. You know, uh, the whole question, um, also what Daniel said in the first talk, right, uh, what the token market price is, uh, is, not, is not modeled in there. So uh, that, that could uh, shake up things uh, quite, quite significantly. And I think what we need to do here is to do additional stress testing of the model you know, to run some Monte Carlo simulations and uh, basically play around uh, with uh, uh, with those, um, you know, basically with varying assumptions for what those, uh, um, you know, values could be. Uh, another interesting thing is we'd be also have sort of a capital financing of, of the future storage, meaning, okay, you know, how much money can I actually save up in my treasury and then, you know, use, uh, uh, use over time um, so it's actually interesting. It, it, it's a little similar to if you look at, uh, you know, how do you, how do you, uh, uh, you know, your pension and, uh, uh, you know, or basically, you know, how you finance your, your old age, right? And uh, you have Social Security, right? And, and the interesting thing with Social Security is that it, it got the opposite effect of what we have here, right? Because people live longer, right? So instead of, you know, we have, uh, you know, the volumes go up, but it's kind of reverse, right? So, so that's the good news, right? So you have the, the longer uh, uh, time period, and uh, well, I'm, I'm saying I'm a little bit rubbishy here, right? So, but but uh, 
So uh, well, let, let's forget that for the time being, all right? So, um, so uh, the um, the other interesting thing really is, you know, if uh, if if it's a stable coin, and so we talked to another company working on that, and they they said uh, uh, that they um, you know focusing on the on the stable coin um, as the uh, you know as the as the payment mechanism. Um, so they completely remove uh, the exchange risk. Uh, so instead of you know using uh, Filecoin as the um, as the as the underlying currency, you know, and there's sort of uh, you know pros uh, pros and cons uh, to that. Why right? do you increase uh, a little bit more stability, right? But you lose the opportunity uh, to participate in the increase of the value of the platform. Um, you know, then there's also the interesting question about the governance and the, the treasury, you know, like how much money you got to keep in the treasury of, of uh, such a system. You know, I think that also ties in uh, very nicely into the previous talk, you know, how much, uh, you know, can you actually have insurance for something like this? And, uh, uh, you know, can you also write, uh, you know, FE M smart contracts, you know, sort of for, uh, out of balancing and doing price adjustments and uh, um, you know and, and but I think we're, we're sort of very early in the stage uh, you know with the FEM itself uh, so we are part of the cohort number one and so we you know going to write some uh, smart contracts on that but uh, you know get to start slowly with the baby steps and uh, do some basic stuff before we get into um, more sophisticated um, you know contracts uh, which deal with uh, uh, things like this. Um, with that, you know, I really want to conclude. I would be very happy uh, if this is, uh, you know, speaking to other people, or if people uh, want to, you know, join us in this effort. Well, I think we are not the only ones who need uh, a model for perpetual or perma storage or long-term storage. And, uh, you know, we uh, would be, you know, very happy uh, to collaborate uh, in addressing uh, that topic. Um, you know, I got my contact details here, you know, grab me in the break right now. And with that, as I promised, you know, try to get you faster to coffee. Thank you very much.